Welcome to module 3.1, where I'll be showing you how to use our primary acquisition script. We use a Python script called Git Properties. This script can read log, com, and GJF files and write its results to a text file. To start, I put a I've put a handful of log files into a folder as an example. These files happen to be three different conformers of the same molecule. When running this, this script in a folder, it will extract properties from all appropriate files located in this folder. Because the script has the capability to extract, extract many different properties, I'll only show a couple today. Before you get started, you may need to know some atom numbers for your molecules. It's highly recommended that you plan out your atom numbers before computations and that you keep your atom numbers consistent across a data set. But if you don't know your atom numbers, one easy way to find them is to use Gauss view. For instance, I have one of my molecules open here and I can hover over the atom I'm interested in, this nitrogen, and down here in the bottom corner, it shows me that this is atom number 22. Moving on to using the script, you'll run the script however you're able to run Python scripts on your computer or on the CHPC. You start by typing the name of the script and press enter. This will give you a list of the options for parameters you can get, including sterimal values, NMR shifts, and BO charges and energies, uh, which are E and G here. To select the parameter you'd like to get, type the name from this list. You can get more than one at a time by separating the names of the space. I'll start by getting energies. Note, this will give you an energy for each job run. So I'll type E space G and hit enter. The script then prints the properties for the files in the folder and writes results in it into a text document in the folder. So here are the results for E and here are the results for G. You'll see it's written as text, these text results. I can now open this and see that my results are separated by semicolons. Uh, the order in which the properties appear correspond to the order in which you've typed results here. So these will be my E energies and then my G energies. I then copy these into Excel and use text to columns to separate these into different columns. You should then, after the, do you do this, annotate the properties you are looking at here. You should note that each time you run the script in a folder, it will overwrite the results file. So if I run the script again to get different properties, the text result, the results text file here will look completely different and will no longer contain the energies. It's not the end of the world if you overwrite something you were uh, hoping to save though, as you can simply rerun it later. So as another example, I can go back and rerun the script to collect more properties. Some of the options here will actually prompt you for more information about the properties you, you want. They will ask you to specify by typing atom numbers or elements. For example, if I want ster sterimal parameters, it will ask me to provide two atoms with which it should create the access to get these values. I would like to look at the sterimal values looking down this bond from this sulfur towards this nitrogen. I can see that this is atom 19 and atom 22. And so if I go back and rerun this script, and I would like to get sterimal values, you can see it asks me for the number of the base atom followed by the first connected atom of the residue of interest. And we said this was 19 followed by 22. You can hit enter and it will give me three sterimal values here. You can see this is L, B1, and B5. So L, B1, and B5. If I again open this text file, I can copy these columns back into Excel and now have my L, B1, and B5 properties for these three molecules. As you go through and compile your properties, you'll start to get a list of properties for each molecule. Furthermore, you can use the energies we extracted to find the Boltzmann average for a set of conformers. Eventually, by continuing in this manner and then formatting your Excel sheet, you'll have built a spreadsheet of properties that can be used with our statistical modeling scripts.